Hi, and welcome to the Ask Dr. Angela show with everyone's favorite OBGYN, Dr. Angela Jones. Have you ever been just too embarrassed or shy to ask your own doctor a question about your, you know, private stuff? Well, you have come to the right place to get straight answers. Feel free to ask Dr. Angela anything women's health related. OBGYN, she keeps it real. Pregnancy, she knows what you're expecting. Whole body health, just ask. Dr. Angela has you covered, girl. And now here is Dr. Angela. Happy holidays, people. This is Dr. Angela, everyone's self-proclaimed favorite OBGYN. And I would like to officially welcome you to episode 57 of the Ask Dr. Angela podcast. Hoping that everyone had a really wonderful Christmas. I love Christmas for a couple of different reasons. Number one, I just love Christmas. I mean, as a kid, I love Christmas. Specifically, I mean, you know, let's just say it, getting the gifts, you know, Santa Claus, the elves. I'm so into all of that. But, you know, certainly with aging and really finally learning the true meaning of Christmas and giving um, and its importance, that really is my favorite part. I love being able to watch my daughter open her gifts, watch my wife open her gifts, and being in a position to be able to give. A really cool tradition that we have in my household is we like to try to foster and teach uh, our little one, Francesca, the spirit of giving and the importance of giving. You know that old proverb, to whom much is given, uh, much is expected. Well, one of the things that, again, we do as a tradition in my household is the day after Christmas, Francesca has a Christmas bag that she puts old toys in that she either doesn't play with or that she thinks a less fortunate child might enjoy having. And so she puts these toys in this Christmas bag. And then the day following Christmas, Santa Claus comes and collects the bag and he distributes it to children that are less fortunate. And um, she looks forward to doing this every year. And it's just something that we really enjoy doing, uh, learning to give back specifically to those that are not as blessed or nearly as fortunate as we are. So having said that, let's jump right into today's question on the Ask Dr. Angela podcast. Today's question is, when should I see my OBGYN when I'm newly pregnant? And this actually is a really good question because a lot of times I find that patients are coming in as soon as they miss that, per, that first period. And then when you come in and see me and I do what I do, which typically is a transvaginal ultrasound to see what's going on inside the uterus, I can't tell you how disappointed, how anxiety provoking it is when you do that transvaginal ultrasound and you don't see anything in the uterus. And from an OBGYN standpoint, this could be due to many different things, but in most cases, it's just due to the patient being way too early. And I got to tell you, it drives me crazy. In my office, we book patients that are, you know, barely five weeks pregnant, and then the patient comes in, and, you know, we do the transvaginal ultrasound, we don't see anything, and then we're doing a series of quantitative beta HCGs and progesterone levels, and bringing the patient back in a week uh, to recheck and reevaluate things. And Patients just don't understand this. It's, again, very anxiety-provoking. And from my standpoint, I'm accustomed to this, but that still doesn't provide any solace to you, the patient, who's like, oh, my gosh, is there something wrong? You know, I'm having this lab work done. I can't wait until next week. So I like when patients come in around the six-week mark because by then I should see, you know, a gestational sac, yolk sac, fetal heart tones. And certainly there are many different reasons why, when you come to this established OB visit, we might not see anything on an ultrasound initially. Number one, you're not sure. You were never sure of when your last menstrual period was. Number two, you've got a history of irregular periods. You don't know when your last period was. In my patients that are breastfeeding and happen to get pregnant, this is very common with them. Or also in my patients that have a history of PCOS where their periods were never regular, this is also very common with them. While certainly I can't predict what I will or will not see on an established OB ultrasound, typically if I have, if I have patients that come in after the six-week mark, I can be rest assured that I will see what I am supposed to see. 
hence saving patients a lot of the anxiety that goes along with having to get serial labs drawn. And again, that typically involves serial quantitative HCG levels. And the HCG level, quantitatively speaking, uh, is the pregnancy hormone level. And typically, we don't see anything until it's about 1,500, 2,000 mark. I'm hoping that this podcast, though brief, provided you with some very helpful information. And remember, when you're going in for your new OB visit, for me personally, I prefer to see my patients when they're, again, at least around the six-week mark uh, so that we have a greater chance of seeing what we're supposed to see on an ultrasound, hence avoiding the anxiety of things like waiting until the following week, repeating serial labs, et cetera. The other thing that I did want to mention is that in those of you that are trying to conceive, please make sure that you are taking a prenatal vitamin preconceptionally. You know, the prenatal vitamin has all the good stuff in it that baby needs. And you want to have that on board prior to getting pregnant. Thank you so, so much for tuning in to episode 57 of the Ask Dr. Angela podcast. Please keep your questions coming. You can reach me by direct message on Twitter. You can email me. You can direct message me on Facebook, or you can go to my website, which is www.askdrangela.com. That's A-S-K-D-R-A-N-G-E-L-A.com. Click on the microphone on the right-hand side of the page and do what you do. If we feature your question on the Ask Dr. Angela podcast, someone from my team will reach out to you and we will send you one of our bomb-ass t-shirts. Please keep the pictures coming. Uh, We're posting them on my Facebook page, on Twitter. You are wearing the t-shirts very well. In closing, I would like to leave you with this. My social media guru, Mike Koala, the self-employed king, posted this on my Twitter feed. It says, there is only one way to avoid criticism. Do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. So I'm challenging you all to do something, say something, and be something. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ask Dr. Angela podcast. Until next time, look better, feel better, be better. Looking forward to reconnecting on episode 58. Thank you for listening to the Ask Dr. Angela podcast. For more information on women's health and the show notes for this episode, please visit Dr. Angela at www.askdrangela.com. While you're there, don't forget to leave your own message for Dr. Angela. See you soon. All of the information provided and discussed in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and should not take the place of consulting a physician. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any diseases or illnesses and does not and should not replace treatment for a medical professional. Listening to and participating in this podcast does not create a doctor-patient relationship between you and Dr. Angela Jones. If you need medical advice or assistance, you should consult a physician. Listening to and participating in this podcast is subject to the terms and conditions posted at drangela.com forward slash terms.